Members, the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 9 April 2024. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that you're present at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including transferring outside Australia. Good evening. Uh, Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to Elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land, and we acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations people who are with us today. Thank you. The Council also acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. We pray for wisdom, courage, empathy, understanding and guidance in the decisions that we make while seeking and respecting the opinions of others. May we in this meeting speak honestly, listen attentively, think clearly and decide wisely for the good governance of the City of Adelaide and the well-being of those we serve. Now, can I ask all those to stand in silence um, for those who gave their lives at sea, on land and in the air in defence of our country. many people in the gallery who would like to see the item which is a motion on notice related to the town uh, the crown and anchor um, so with the leave of the meeting I'll bring forward that item now can I seek leave of the meeting All those in favor All those against that's carried thank you so now I intend to bring forward um, item 17.2 on the agenda that's our motion on notice from Councillor Snape or the Deputy Lord Mayor Deputy Lord Mayor, thank you, seconded Lord Mayor. by seconded. Councillor Giles. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Giles, for seconding this motion. The Crown and Anchor was established in 1853, and at 171 years of age, it's one of South Australia's oldest pubs. It is an important part of our built heritage here in Adelaide, heritage which is increasingly under threat and must be protected. We, as a city, must be careful not to fall into a trap of rudimentary facadism keeping the walls intact, but losing the rest of the historic built form, examples of which pepper our city. However, as important as our built, built heritage is, the Crown Anchor is so much more than just bricks and mortar. It is the heart and soul of our city, and our, the heart and soul indeed of our live music scene, providing many up and coming musos and bands the opportunity to perform, to grow and reach new audiences. Almost everyone I've talked to has had their own experiences and fond memories of the Cranker. Indeed, as a UNESCO City of Music, the kind of lived and living culture that the, Cran that the Cranker espouses is, in one word, priceless. We're now in a tricky situation where the Cranker was, in 1991, awarded local heritage listing because of a combination of both its built form and its cultural heritage. Yet, in effect, according to the Minister, in uh, the current development codes, only the, the facade is protected. This motion 
at its heart, ask the Lord Mayor to write to the Premier and ask for intervention from the State Government to step up and protect the Crown and Anchor and to also change the planning code so that beloved venues like the Krenka are protected for their cultural heritage going forward. I want to thank the rapidly growing uh, community campaign that is building around saving the Krenka, many dozens of which are here in the gallery today, and I believe uh, more are watching from home. I also want to thank the organisers for their time and dedication to such a worthy cause. And finally, I want to thank you, Lord Mayor, for your ongoing support for this campaign. Indeed, when I messaged you about meeting up outside the Krenka and doing a bit of social media, I was expecting it to take a week or so, maybe a few days, to coordinate. But indeed, less than two hours later, we're outside filming a video, and I believe you've done more since then. So thank you for your ongoing support, Lord Mayor. In conclusion, I urge my fellow elected members to support this motion, support our built heritage, support our live music scene, and support our cranker. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, your seconder, Councillor Giles, would you like to speak now? Um, yes, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I rise in support of this motion um, and just to note that the very first time I heard about it was on the social media, so very great campaign being run so far by the people involved in this um, really important issue and was extremely concerned that this amazing live venue that's had so much connection to the history and to the culture of our city but also to the thriving um, history and culture of our music industry that's been built in Adelaide. I sit on the board of the um, Adelaide City of Music um, and we, um, UNESCO has uh, designated we're a city of music because of the um, long-standing commitment to live music and to music development in this city and we've got that designation as the only city in Australia with the designation and the, um, the Crown and Anchor Hotel is an example of that history and that story. Um, I'm also really concerned that there, may, that there may be a trend that I've seen happening over time in relation to developers um, and the way they view these amazing pubs that sit on corners right around our city. Um, I live in the south west of the city and a number of residents were extremely concerned when the King Head, King's Head um, development was approved by SCAP, um, a 16 storey um, hotel behind the King's Head. And at the time, the proponents of the development said that their intention was to keep the King's Head operating as a live music venue and reinvigorate its social offering. And it has, that was in uh, July the 14th, 2022, and it's been no, no, nothing happened on that site since then, and it's like been a, a corner of crickets in terms of live music. The other one I'm concerned about is um, the Colonel Light Hotel, which is currently for lease on the corner of Light Square and Curry Street. Um, and in the um, leasing uh, uh, advertisement, it talks about we look, they're looking for a short-term lease it's, uh, because they want someone who'd be interested in being um, part of a potential imposing redevelopment of the corner. So I'm really concerned that developers are seeing these buildings as the front of another large building and what that means for live ven music venues in the city is really shocking. Um, we know that going to the pub, listening to a band is the first beginning of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a career of a musician. My son once played at the Exeter and that was so exciting. We, were, we all went along, it was terrible, but, <laughs> but we all went along. <laughs> because um, that's the sort of encouragement that uh, musicians need, is that early start, a local start, and then um, we've seen incredible musicians come out of Adelaide because they started that, at that level. And a large number of them actually started at the Crown and Anchor. So I would love it if our council sent a very strong message to the state government, to the uh, planning, uh, planning laws, so that we can make sure that we keep hold of these old pubs that, that, that ensure that live music thrives in Adelaide. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Elliott and then Councillor Davis and I, Councillor Noon, I suspect we're all in furious agreement here. Um, so I look forward to Councillor Davis, who's opposing the motion, then uh, Councillor Elliott. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. And before I start speaking, um, I do have a variation or an amendment to the, uh, the motion which I have lodged with the administration prior to the meeting start, so I think which adds to the, um, the effect of the motion rather than changing it. Um, 
briefly, the amendment that I'm proposing asks that rather than just writing to the Premier, um, we write to the relevant ministers uh, to make sure that the message is sent directly to the people who have the decision-making capacity um, and have the levers at their disposal to actually make these changes. Could I just interrupt you for a second before I ask for a second of the amendment? Uh, would you like to vary your motion? I'm happy to accept it as a variation, Lord Mayor. We'll take that as a variation then. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And to find a pragmatic solution to um, this issue that actually seeks a solution to prevent um, the loss of uh, this venue and other venues. Um, I guess you could describe my, I, could, I could describe myself as a survivor of uh, the Cranker, having um, been a, a student that spent quite a lot of time there during my studies. It's uh, one of those oases in the East End that kind of gets you through a lot of those tough times. Um, the, the social space that it offers is completely unparalleled in the city, and it's one of very few places left like it. Um, and it's always fascinated me as someone who studied sociology and geography um, with a particular interest in urban space and transport. It really is a, a melting pot and a nexus for all the, the, the fabulous things that make Adelaide unique. Um, but really what we want to do out of this is actually address the problems with the, the planning and design code that completely overlook the value of places like that. Um, the current planning and design code only considers the aesthetics and while it's a beautiful building, um, it has so much more to it. And just keeping the facade doesn't mean that the crank is still there. Um, you're effectively hollowing out the, the building and thereby you're losing its soul as well. Um, early on this council made a commitment to sensible development and that gave uh, equal consideration to the housing needs and the unique social and cultural offering of this city. Um, however, we still don't know the particulars of what this application entails and whether it's actually possible to develop on a part of this site without it affecting the, uh, the structural social integrity of the cranker itself. Um, that in that vein, it's entirely possible that something could change on that site but retain the cranker interior and exterior and all its functionings. Um, therefore, we must seek collaboration with the state government uh, to prevent the loss of uh, this venue and any other future losses, and I commend the motion. So, thank you. Could I just confirm that Councillor Giles was happy to accept the variation? Thank you, that's accepted. Councillor Davis and then Councillor Noon. I just had a question first and then I'd like to speak. Um, my question was, um, Councillor Snape said that uh, this would, um, it called for uh, protection and intervention to protect the Crown and Anchor in that letter. Is that the case? Um, I don't think that in law we can protect something retrospectively. But, but I does this motion call for no, it intervention doesn't. It's and cause it, uh, As I read the words as printed, it's asking to write to the Premier expressing concerns, and I suspect one would then explore any opportunities, but right. I don't think that one can retrospectively change planning law. No. Um, can I speak to it now? Yeah. Um, so the motion does basically nothing. Um, we note a whole bunch of things, and then we decide that we're going to write to the Premier asking for him to consider options about putting further onus on heritage uh, development. The issue with heritage in our state is that the planning laws and the heritage laws around it are such that it becomes completely uncommercially viable over time to invest in those types of heritage things because the cost is simply untenable. Now, I've seen multiple heritage applications for complete demolition of heritage places uh, when I was a, a councillor in the city of Burnside, and it gets to a point where it's basically uneconomical to actually maintain the property, and then our planning laws allow you to just demolish it. That's the issue that I see. Writing to develop options to actually put more of an onus on heritage owners has a complete opposite idea of what you're trying to do, which is trying to make these types of venues and heritage commercially viable. London, are very much opposed to Adelaide, has absolutely beautiful heritage that maintained for hundreds of years, and they've put those requirements around there and activated commercial space and driven demand for heritage places uh, within London. And that's the type of thing that we should be looking at here. This delivers absolutely nothing apart from a lot of in daily articles, which, to my frank, to be honest, don't really go to the actual point of how do you actually preserve these types of buildings uh, in the city. In many ways, I would very much like to see some of these Greens policies get up, even for a short period of time, so you can see their destructive nature. So putting more onus on heritage buildings, making it harder for venues, what you're talking about here 
is to now not only protect the heritage but also social and cultural values, it actually just reduces the value of the land and makes it even harder for them to hold and even less likely that they'll be able to mortgage it, even less likely that they'll be able to invest in the actual property. So I won't be voting for this because it doesn't do anything apart from write a fuzzy letter to the Premier, which you know, will, everyone here knows, will go nowhere. And if you think it will, come back in six months and see what the response from the Premier is, see what the response from these ministers are, see what actual policy comes out of it. And yes, we'll all feel good about ourselves and go home tonight and go, yeah, we did something. But you actually didn't because you didn't take the time to properly consider what heritage uh, means as a challenge to the landlord and what it actually means to preserve and activate and get going. And what it really needs is a huge amount of money and actually full occupancy and tenancy in the city. When you have a commercial property next door which is vacant, which one are you going to go and inhabit? You're, going to knock down, you're not going to go and in, uh, invest in a heritage building when you have commercial vacancy next door. So we can all go home and feel good about ourselves and how all the great work that the Greens are doing, calling on the Premier and doing nothing. But to my mind, you've actually got to sit down with landlords, figure out how you can preserve heritage, look at what London's doing and take it somewhere, rather than having a big ado uh, about nothing. Advocating for a fabulous cause is not a waste of time, and this is. I totally support this motion, and I think it goes towards um, the City of Adelaide having more say in the development within our city. Um, for, for this to happen, for the, for the government to call us crazy on, on decisions we make, this would be crazy if they did this. So I am in total support of this. This is a fantastic establishment. To see um, this um, disappear would be a very sad day. Thank you. Kouros, are you going to speak against the motion or for it? No, Lord Mayor, I'm not going to speak against the motion. I, I too, um, would like to see it a lot stronger. I do have a lot of fear in how the government will view it, but we have to set a position as, as a council. That's what we're here for, um, to set a position on what's happening in the city. I, too, agree that this will be a very sad day to be seen to be gone. I, too, agree that we need to preserve our heritage. I, too, agree that live music is very important to us to, within our city. And these are the messages that we need to send to the government. We need to let them know that this is concerning, this is not appropriate, and this is not something that we as a council will agree with. We as a council need to create a stance and need to ensure that our heritage and our culture and our community is preserved in this city. Uh, Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, can I just get some clarification first? Um, I just want to make sure that uh, uh, I'm uh, understanding this correctly. This is a uh, local heritage um, listed place, is that correct? It's local heritage listed, yes. And um, is it uh, that heritage listing, is it just the facade or does it um, uh, expand? Um, local other? heritage listing only reflects the external appearance. External appearance, thank you. And, uh, and in terms of uh, council feedback, I just want to understand the process. Um, when it comes to local heritage uh, listing uh, buildings, um, is council feedback only sought from council administration, not necessarily the, uh, the elected chamber? I'm sorry, can you just repeat the so question? The, uh, I misunderstood. So, uh, the administration comment refers to um, a submission being made. Um, I just, just want to get an understanding of um, the submission that is being made. Is that from council administration only? I'm sorry, I understand that. Yep. It's a staff recommendation by Cuisine as to the size of the investment. Right. Uh, therefore, as a SCAP application, there is a consultation with the planning staff. On occasion, they have made decisions based on discussion in this chamber, but basically it's a response to the planning regulations and the heritage listing. Mm -hmm. um, Lord Mayor, can I start by um, thanking Councillor Elliott for bringing those uh, variations uh, into the motion. Uh, very much uh, support that. Um, uh, to be honest, I'm a little bit torn about uh, how I, uh, I will vote on this uh, particular motion because, because of a number of reasons. One is that um, we as a council have made a decision uh, about 
uh, creating um, uh, vibrant precincts, uh, increasing our population, and it seems like this development application that's been put in is going to do that. It is going to increase the population. Um, uh, so I'm just a bit mindful that uh, um, uh, on one hand we're saying this is what we want to do, but on the other hand uh, we're also restricting uh, those that are helping us achieve one of our outcomes. Uh, the other thing is um, uh, one of our subsidiaries in, in AIDA uh, is uh, charged with uh, bringing investment into the city. Now, again, uh, through this application, there's a uh, uh, there's an entity that's willing to invest in our city, but again, here we are creating red tape, saying that uh, you're not able to do it. Now, I, I'm I'm all I'm all about um, uh, supporting our um, our heritage and, and our culture and, and the past, because if you don't preserve that, the future generation uh, doesn't learn about it. There's uh, there's a lot that we, that we can do in, in preserving that, but but. Um, I just, I just fail to understand how, on one hand, we are saying that, uh, uh, that, that we are going to increase the population and saying, no, you're not able to build. We are going to create vibrancy, but no, we don't want extra people. And, and you know what, if, if I'm fair, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, we're not the only local government jurisdiction that does this. The local government, unfortunately, does have a, uh, 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 does have a reputation in, in, in that. Um, um, there was one final point, Lord Mayor, that I uh, that I was going to make, and um, ah, and that was that the previous council had made a decision to look at uh, one particular incentive, and that was to uh, to essentially look at certain projects and provide a soundproofing incentive. Now, uh, if if my memory serves me right, the uh, incentive that came back was actually quite uh, insignificant, quite small. Uh, and so uh, I would encourage us, if you want to, um, if you want to be serious about having these sorts of uh, uh, projects in our city, uh, that we ought to look at um, an incentive like that and maybe even table it with the state government so that if future uh, um, projects like this come along, then we're able to reach some sort of a compromise and with that incentive have something in place that is going to support that venue and the residents. Um, can I just seek clarification before the sum of summing up is performed? I think we have a one, over $1 million in heritage incentives and a sustainability fund that is used for uh, soundproofing. So I think that money is available, is it? Could I just ask through the CEO? Uh, Mr. Haroudis, you are able to answer that question? Uh, thank you, and through the Chair, that is correct. We have a heritage incentive scheme, a sustainability incentive scheme, and additionally, a noise incentive scheme as well. Lord Mayor, just um, with that uh, clarity, can I just um, uh, ask through you uh, the soundproofing scheme, um, how much money is allocated to it and whether if, uh, there is a certain cap for uh, an application? Um, I don't believe it, it, it commonly goes over a quarter of a million, um, but I know that we invest nearly five times more than the state government does for the entire state. So could I just ask through you the cap? Um, through the presiding member, Mr. Herodes. Thank you, and through the chair. If I take the question specifically to the noise management scheme, uh, that is capped at $3,000 per application, which represents, and that's towards 50% co-contribution to noise attenuation measures. BLM, uh, would you like to sum up? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I do thank Councillor Davis for his, um, his points. It's very illuminating. Um, you know, I just worry that sometimes the perception could be that some of my colleagues are too busy to, uh, protecting the profits of developers and not protecting our communities. Now, you talk about profits, you talk about commerce, yet from my understanding, the Crown and Anchor is in fact running a very successful business model with a lot of community support, all here tonight, or a significant chunk of it here tonight, which goes to show that what, what's happening is working. So I don't think providing additional uh, heritage protections, which is only part of the motion, mind, I don't see how that is going against um, the commercial aspects. But what this motion talks to is not just the heritage building. It talks about the gap that we have in our building code, the gap that we have in our development code that, that does not acknowledge and does not protect 
the cultural heritage, the living, breathing, and historical being of a location, not just a wall, not just a bar, not just a roof, but the cultural heritage. Look, I'm, it's, a bit, it's a bit sad that a few of my colleagues here tonight find it so hard to support such a no-brainer of, of emotion. And I would ask my colleagues, the, the naysayers in the room, to search your heart and see if you can support the people who are in this room tonight and are across our city and across our state and in supporting the Crown and Anchor. Thank you. We will move the motion now as varied. Um, all those in favour? All those against? That's carried. Division. division has been called. Members, the division has been called in relation to item 7.2. Please stand until your name has been called in favour of the motion. Councillor Noon, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Kouros, Councillor Lee, Councillor Stephen Tripp, Councillor Giles, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Martin. Thank you. Members, that's been carried. Please uh, feel free to stay and watch the rest of the proceedings. Um, it may not be as entertaining as a night at the Cranker, but um, you may not come here very often, so please feel free to stay. Lord I'm Mayor, could I request a five-minute um, break while we allow the gallery to, um, to leave and perhaps take a uh, photo opportunity out in there? Um, I got the impression they were enjoying themselves here. <laughs> <laughs> Um,
Yes, I'm happy to do that, Lord Mayor. Bend them for the 10 minutes, maybe. Certainly, Lord Thank Mayor. Uh, look, I, in that case, I will not debate. I'll merely explain uh, what the motion seeks to do. Uh, the, uh, the proposal that was before us from the administration suggested that we should endorse this part of the budget, that is, the part of the budget uh, related, as the document suggests, to projects and service charges for inclusion in the budget. We should endorse those for public consultation. Uh, in discussion with others and with the administration, um, I'm proposing that it would be better that the council endorsed the budget as a whole when it has that opportunity two weeks from tonight and it will include other components which are not part of the discussion tonight and most notably because it came up uh, at an earlier briefing and uh, colleagues have raised it with me most notably funding for sponsorships and grants which are part of the second instalment of the budget two weeks from now um, considered together i think will give members the opportunity uh, to be satisfied with the document as a whole rather than uh, in parts. And my understanding is that the administration, Lord Mayor, has no objection to that. The, uh, the second part of the uh, proposal at three um, is to ask for, uh, sorry, at two, is to ask for a matter that is related to sponsorships and grants. At page uh, 99 of your papers, um, there are two uh, amounts, one a city activation, which includes Australia Day, and commercial events funding, uh, which it's been put to me would more properly sit in the discussion that we're to have next Tuesday and approved Tuesday week. Those things would best be considered in that context. Uh, however, uh, for the purposes of this discussion, um, the, uh, I'm proposing that the Australia Day Council uh, amount, which is about, I think we heard at uh, committee, 188,000, is excluded from uh, this part of the motion, uh, but will of course come as part of the, uh, the broader discussion. And uh, also uh, that we endorse the proposal for uh, 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 the increase, or at least note, uh, the proposal for the increase in uh, rates uh, and also uh, the levy uh, for capital works. Uh, I have also included in there an amendment that I have proposed related to a, uh, a rebate of $100 for uh, aged and disability pensioners. Um, that amount to be capped at $50,000 when that uh, uh, payment was axed in 2021, uh, the total cost of the council was uh, $34,000. Um, I do not expect that it will be greater than 50,000. And of course it is, uh, as is proposed here, uh, payable after application from eligible ratepayers, the administration to uh, determine eligibility. And finally, I have asked uh, the administration to provide further advice um, uh, about the inclusion and implementation of a committed allocation from the budget for the upgrade of uh, parklands build buildings equivalent to 1.5 per cent of rates um, which would provide two million dollars a year uh, for women's and children's facilities in parklands buildings and I have suggested that we should ask the state government to match that dollar for dollar so that we can embark on a substantial program uh, to end some of those uh, disgraceful uh, circumstances in which we're asking people to uh, uh, shower, change uh, or toilet. Lord Mayor, that's essentially an explanation. Can I just ask if it would be more polite not to say to be matched by an equal state government commitment and to um, to seek an equal, because it's a bit presumptuous. Lord Mayor, I'm happy to be guided <laughs> by your great experience in this area. 
and um, uh, I will accept that or any variation that uh, you'd like to propose. Um, sorry, we find that when we get back out of meeting, back into meeting procedures. Um, are there any other questions or just comments that we need to have to make so there's clarity? When we go back into meeting procedures, I would like to take this in parts specifically so that people can choose which bits, so I think that would be fair. Um, Councillor Siebentritt. Lord Mayor, if open to variations, just on item number six, it says notes the requirement for an asset renewal repair fund. I'm being a little bit of a stickler for detail, but isn't it a proposal for an asset renewal repair fund? I understand there's currently what suggests is a requirement for 4.582 million, but isn't it a proposal rather than a requirement? I'm happy to accept that, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. So um, we should have a proposal. So we just no, kept proposed requirement. Yes. Proposed requirement. And item seven has the beauty of actually us committing money for the parklands buildings, which we've struggled to actually find any movement on. And that would commit it's one of the advantages of our heritage fund is it's a commitment of a percentage. Um, as it is with our climate change funding. So it actually makes it easier. Councillor Davis? Yeah. I was just going to say, um, I was just going to say that, yeah, actually this looks pretty good. So um, I'm, I'm quite happy. I don't think, do we need to stay in informal? Can we just move this forward? I'm, I'm generally in support of this. I actually like the solution in seven. Yeah. Um, something for us to consider and it allows us to, to further consider these items. I actually agree that we need to be looking at this holistically rather than uh, in separate parts because I want to see the whole thing along with the long-term financial plan um, estimates as well. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm generally in favour of what Councillor Martin's proposing. Um, I'm um, in the hands of the uh, Chamber. I would have preferred it in parts, but uh, do we have any consensus? We're still out of meeting procedure. The mover, would you be happy to take it in parts? Uh, Lord Mayor, I'm happy uh, to accept your guidance. Parts <laughs> is fine. Oh, dear. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I have a variation which I've submitted to the administration. I'm just currently seeking advice on the most appropriate place to insert this, whether it's as an addition to 0.7 I, or... I think as a technicality, I can't accept amendments and variations while we're out of meeting procedure. Is that true? What is, what is the um, Sorry, am I able to speak to Can you just to, talk what, to it yes. then? Can you speak to it? Sure. So this is something that I've um, communicated to the administration um, a few times and actually submitted um, for discussion at the March 19 um, CFG, uh, however, it wasn't included and in uh, didn't get discussed. Um, however, I've had multiple discussions about the possibility of uh, separated bikeway trials and how we might find uh, an economical and efficient way of being able to um, work that into our existing program of works for road renewals. Um, and so my variation will have the effect of um, allowing council to consider, consider how will we be able to have a small fund allocated that would essentially cover um, the amount of variation to a road renewal project that would allow us to introduce um, new asset classes such as road blisters or small bollards that would effectively achieve a separated bikeway on the provision that is operating as a bikeway trial to allow us to uh, seek community uh, feedback on how the trial is working, how the infrastructure works, uh, what changes are, uh, are required how different street users are affected, including traders and residents um, and people accessing parking without substantially changing the nature of the road. We have the benefit of uh, some very large, wide roads in our city that can very easily accommodate all modes of transport, but we have make, made the decision not to do that. Um, this would essentially allow us to cover that small cost of um, variation in a renewal project cost to uh, purchase and implement those uh, small additions. Um, and assess the efficacy of that, um, that trial and decide if it's worth continuing after a certain time. And the details, um, again, would come out of uh, the consideration of this process. I hope that made sense. Um, thank you. Yes, I think I followed that. Um, shall we go back into meeting procedures now so we can accept those slight variations and then make a decision and vote? Councillor Noon, I didn't let you speak, but I'll, shall we go back when we get back into... Shall we go back into meeting procedures now? normal meeting procedure. Um, and Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Are you happy with the uh, uh, seven you were? I, I just wondered, 
Um, I'm sorry, if it would be possible, can I just seek some advice to make it less... Uh, confrontational? Yes. <coughs> um, to be matched? Uh, to seek. And, uh, and, and, and whoops. Be, uh, to seek match... Uh, to seek, seek match funds from... Match funds from through... Through. Oh yes, it's very elegant. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for that slight variation. And moving to item uh, clause eight, which is the variation suggested by um, Councillor Elliott. I'll just read it. It's requests administration provide further advice on the inclusion implementation for funding allocation for separation bikeway trials to be implemented alongside road renewal projects. It's quite straightforward. Do you want to take that as a variation? I'm happy to accept that. Yes. I'm very grateful, thank you. We need a... I think we've got a landing, um, and Councillor Martin's happy to incorporate that, I think. Sorry, Councilor. Lord Mayor, I was just going to suggest um, changing the word um, alongside um, to something maybe a bit more deliberate, uh, uh, incorporated within, or aligned, with. aligned with. I think that's okay. much more appropriate. Thank, Thank you, you, Acting CEO. And um, Councillor Siebentritt has his uh, hand up, but I just think that now we would technically allow Councillor Martin to open the debate. I, have we gone back into formal, Lord Mayor? Yes. Can I check that Councillor Noon is happy with the variation? Thank you. Sorry, Lord Mayor, my, my comment was just in relation to six. We agreed to vary, but it hasn't been reflected in the wording on the screen. ask Councillor Martin to begin the debate. Look, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor, and uh, again, I remind colleagues, we are noting this is not a matter for final resolution. It will be the subject of further discussion and agreement two weeks from tonight. But look, it is an opportunity uh, to speak about where we are, and tonight we are at the end of a very long road, uh, and I guess we can trace it back to about 10 years where uh, previous councils have frozen the rate in the dollar, uh, not done any valuations which would have assisted us in terms of uh, an increase in our rate revenue. And I, look, Lord Mayor, I supported some of those measures. I thought they were important at the time. But clearly, uh, they have placed enormous pressure on this city in terms of it meeting its capacity to deliver services. Uh, our administration notes our costs have gone up by about 6%. What is proposed uh, in the documents presented to us by the administration is a rate increase of just over 3%. And I might add, substantially less than is proposed in rate increases in a lot of other councils throughout Adelaide. One hears of increases uh, of up to 9%, and some of our neighbouring councils are talking about 6%. It also contains, this document, uh, a necessary measure, a regrettable one. I regret it profoundly that uh, we're in a bit of a pickle when it comes to maintaining our assets. Our asset ratio, uh, maintenance ratio has been languishing for some years. We've been delivering around about 60% of the requirement when it should have been 90%. And Lord Mayor, it, it is a, a matter of some regret that much of that problem arose through 2018 2022 during the term of what was called the team adelaide council there was a reluctance to commit funds to asset management and indeed uh, noting the uh, the papers of the audit and risk committee the blame is fairly aimed at those four years it says they were responsible for our not achieving our asset ratio funding objective
It's a sad paper, Lord Mayor, because it goes on to talk about the way in which there have been miscalculations about our budgets. Uh, for example, in the area of building assets, the Audit and Risk Committee is told that $10.4 million, which represents just 69% of the requirement was allocated, where the requirement is about $4 million more. Now, this is a huge burden that has been dumped on us, dumped on us from a great height, uh, and the ratepayers of the City of Adelaide. And uh, I'm afraid that there seems to be, as the administration is putting to us, no alternative but to apply a levy as a means of extricating ourselves from this. Extricating ourselves from this, uh, this terrible mess. Um, we are, in fact, talking about an increase uh, overall, that is, the rates and the levy, which I hasten to add, uh, colleagues, is a temporary measure to enable the administration in 24-25 to address some of the issues and to help us to find a way through this mess. Um, it is a 6%, slightly more, increase. Um, and it suggested to me that um, it is a, a, a considerable um, a amount, something that I know our ratepayers will regret also. Lord Mayor, um, the good news is uh, if there is good news to be found in all of this, is the good news is that responsible financial management has returned to the City of Adelaide. We are managing the budget. We are meeting our obligations, the obligations that our predecessors failed to honour. They, they ignored our asset management. We have crumbling assets as a consequence. Footpaths, roads, uh, assets that urgently need attention. It is, uh, it is regrettable. I, I say that I, I do regret that we're um, doing this, but it is a path forward. And equally, equally, there is, I suggest to you, a path forward in managing what is an appalling circumstance in our parklands where buildings have been let go. There has been virtually no attention to our parklands buildings, the ones owned by the City of Adelaide, for many, many years. And as a consequence, we're asking women and children to change in facilities that are uh, not only antiquated, but malfunctioning. Toilets that leak, showers that don't work, change rooms that are shared uh, with men and other sports people. Um, Lord Mayor, I think this is a path through. I, I hope that colleagues will endorse this uh, and uh, send a clear message that we are in we'll fact have you, We'll have on you track. sum up later, but Councillor Noon, do you wish to? Um, I have Councillor Elliott and then Councillor Davis. Councillor Elliott. Uh, thank you. I'll echo some of the, well, echo the sentiment of some of the points of um, my colleague Councillor Martin, but I think we really are at a point of recognising that it, it is time for a, a change in business as usual. Over the last couple of terms of council, some things have worked, some things haven't. That happens in every single term of council. Some things worked at the time and no longer work. Some things were a great idea at the time and may not be a good idea now. One of those things is uh, my proposal that has come through at point eight. It's one thing that was proposed as business as usual back in 2012 as part of the Smart Move strategy and it was never implemented. So road renewals are something that we do all the time. It is business as usual and this proposition is something that just slightly changes how we're doing it in keeping with a more than 10 year old strategy that was never implemented by, the, uh, by council. This is something that uh, changes the, uh, the approach that, um, but also fundamentally gives us an opportunity to reduce our road maintenance liability by increasing the amount of road space that's allocated to lightweight vehicles such as e-bikes, such as bicycles, such as e-scooters and even mobility, uh, uh, mobility scooters. When you have less heavy vehicles travelling on tarmac, you cause less damage to it. Areas that have uh, separated bikeways have demonstrated they only need to replace half the road, um, as, half the road space uh, anywhere near as often as they would normally have to if they have cars on it, um, as if they had bicycles instead. Um, so in keeping with our strategic priorities of one, tripling our, the number of cycling trips in, the, into the, in and around the city, um, increasing the accessibility of people with dis uh, accessibility of the city with people with a disability, and also gradually removing 
e-scooters from our footpaths into more appropriate infrastructure. This is one of those measures that achieves that with a very small change to the way that we conduct business around road renewals. Um, I have a whole range of other issues that I wish to raise about um, how much we've allocated to certain other items. Um, it has already been mentioned about the city activation with the $250,000 bid at the moment uh, and the, the current indication that 188 is um, only really required. That process, I think, is entirely necessary out of the outcome of this motion, which is to, um, to note the report and, and consider it further in a workshop. Um, it's absolutely vital that we go through some of those things, uh, discuss some of the bloat, discuss some of the necessities, and look to make some, some well-considered cuts um, that will actually allow us to achieve our strategic aims rather than continuing with business as usual for things that may or may not be working um, as well as they did during uh, COVID or over the last 10 years. So I commend the motion. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Davis. I'd like to uh, echo the sentiments of Councillor Martin and condemn the last council during, counts, uh, during the COVID years for not raising our council rates. So what we should have done during the COVID years was increase our, our council rates uh, and driven our current existing businesses into the ground. That would have been an appropriate response uh, and, and, and well-informed response by this council to make sure that business never returns uh, to the city of Adelaide. And the fact that we didn't hire more parking inspectors to go and charge people repeatedly on their cars whilst they were self-isolating in their homes, trying to not spread a virus throughout our community, is reprehensible. I mean, there are members here from the last council who could have hired additional parking inspectors to, to increase rate revenue um, by really smacking our, our residents and, and encourages them to leave the city uh, forever. So I do think that the actions of the last council were reprehensible in trying to keep rates as low as possible during COVID. And that's just a real disappointing mess that we now have to, um, to deal with. And, and I actually personally blame the last council uh, for COVID in its entirety. Um, I would also like to now congratulate uh, all those recently new elected members, and including myself, for uh, personally clearing all COVID restrictions and the impact of uh, COVID. So it was obviously as a result of the, the, the residents of the City of Adelaide by electing me as a representative that I made personally COVID go away. So you are welcome. So I would like to echo uh, Councillor Martin in condemning the last council for introducing COVID uh, into this council and not driving businesses into, our, into the ground during that period. Thank you. Irony is not dead. Um, Councillor Kouros. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, very interesting discussion. Um, I'm just trying to collect my thoughts, sorry. It's a lot to take in in those, uh, some of the speakers there. But I'm actually just going back to uh, last term of council, I just actually want to congratulate the administration for taking us through some very difficult years during our COVID years. Um, they were a lot of decisions, hard decisions that had to be made, um, which is reflective of what um, has been answered in um, Councillor Martin's question, which, you know, um, condemning a, um, a council is also condem condemning the previous council is also condemning our administration who worked very hard to keep um, the ratepayers' uh, interests and alive uh, within the city of um, Adelaide. And there was a lot of um, impacts during that time, as clearly noted in point two in the reply. And if we had to go by some of the suggestions that were put forward last, mo last, uh, last term of council, considered by Councillor Martin offering free rates for six months, there would have been a further debt to this council. So um, thankfully, we didn't adhere to uh, free rates uh, for six months. But nevertheless, we're moving forward. And thankfully, thankfully, we have uh, moved um, out of this uh, COVID little rut that we uh, were in, and we are freely able to look forward. But Lord Mayor, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say uh, thank you for your uh, suggestion for point number seven. Um, I believe that you brought that in at committee and uh, thank you for your leadership in that and trying to solve a solution in going forward in those matters uh, regarding our um, upgrades for our buildings and the parklands. But I will say, uh, Lord Mayor, that I'm, I don't look at this as budget repair and I'm, I'm sorry and I know you're probably going to look down at me on this one. I actually look at this as budget robbery because what we're doing is that we're cutting, cutting, cutting things to achieve the things that this council wants. It's, it's, a, it's kind of like a self-interest. 
So, for instance, we're looking at um, cutting back um, city activation and possible commercial events, and it's going to impact our businesses. 75% of our rates come from our businesses, it comes from, from commercial. So we have to really think clearly about what, what you're cutting and what you're actually going to impact. We've already um, cut back, we ceased the services for business activation supports, we ceased services for the fashion industry support, we ceased services for uh, New Year's Eve events incentives. We've, we, we're ceasing services that help support the businesses that are doing it tough at the moment. But we're adding in a possibly um, a uh, Southwest Community Centre for 1.5 million. We're adding in um, other uh, items which um, is going to uh, service uh, a wider community, which is great, but we're not looking at what the core... Extend your time. Uh, all those in favour? Leave granted. Thank you, Councillor. And, and not that I'm disagreeing with a need for a community centre law mayor, but what I'm saying is that we're not looking at what is impacting our city at the moment. Our businesses are hurting. They are suffering at the moment. The impacts of the post-COVID era is that they're bearing the brunt of. And we really need to think closely or cl cl clearly about what that is going to impact for our city. We don't want a ghost town. We don't want businesses leaving. We don't want businesses to be packing up and going to the suburbs, because that's basically what's happening. Maybe um, we need to think more clearly about a strategy and how we're going to support them. I don't feel that this budget does that. I feel that this budget is going to impact them. And, we're, and as I said, it's not a budget repair, it's a budget robbery. Um, so, Councillor Siebentritt. Lord Mayor, uh, thank you. One could be forgiven at times for thinking we're in an episode of uh, Back to the Future or even Outlander, for those of you who enjoy that type of uh, TV series. Uh, but I did want to thank Councillor Martin for putting forward this motion. Clearly, we are at a difficult point, and I disagree with Councillor Curris. We are in a period of budget repair. That is exactly what this is about. Uh, none of us can shy away from the fact, regardless of how it occurred, that there is money, additional money, that needs to be spent on maintaining our assets. And we're going to be considered one of the leading councils in South Australia, which I suggest we want to aspire to. We need to get back to an asset renewal ratio above 90 per cent. That is what is expected of a council such as ours. So we need to recognise, even though there is a hard job to be done here, we need to embrace looking at how we ultimately raise, uh, look at the revenue in relation to asset renewal. And that may end up in some difficult discussions, I suspect, in the coming weeks around what other parts of our budget may need to be reviewed, one might say, in order to achieve that. The only other point I wanted to draw attention to is thank you for Councillor Martin as well in relation to item seven. I think this is a, a good way, given the discussions that have been had in this chamber and elsewhere, around how to shine more of a light on community buildings and the parklands, and I look forward to that uh, progressing, hopefully, to resolution where we can meet the needs of what contemporary community buildings in our parklands look like. Council thank you, Lord Mayor. And uh, I once again find myself rather illuminated um, by my colleagues uh, ironic uh, speech, so I certainly appreciate that. I'm sure his uh, 263 voters are well serviced by his advocacy from Allgate. So, um, so you're going to let that fly? Sorry, I, I withdraw that comment. Lord Mayor. Don't reflect on Councillor Davis. Apologies, Lord Mayor. I, I, I withdraw an apology that comment. Or? I'm just. It's okay. Please sit down. We've, I've asked him not to reflect on your domicile. I, I do feel there is some interesting historical revision um, happening in, in the chamber. Um, the bottom line is, is that we've had four years of maintenance neglect. 60% is nowhere near the 90% of which is, which is our um, minimum, oh, our minimum target. Um, fin the financial irresponsibility of the, pa the past is catching up to us. And I must say as well, uh, COVID is an interesting excuse and I know COVID had an impact of course but what about the two years prior to COVID which is when the rot really set in when when the mismanagement well not mismanagement forgive me the miss um I don't know what to say that just the uh <laughs> just the uh irresponsible use of of main of, of uh, funding maintenance let's say 
began. It began before um, COVID. It continued into COVID, of course. It, uh, the ship was too late, late to change course at that point. But the rot had well and truly set in. This, as Councillor Martin has mentioned, is a financially responsible council. This is a council that is getting on with the job. So as much as you know, I sh should ask for forgiveness for reflecting on the past, now is the time to look to the future. And this is a sensible motion. It's a sensible direction that this council is taking. It is going to be a bit, a bit, bit painful for some, but this council has to do the right thing. And so, therefore, I commend this motion to the chamber. We have to do the right thing now so that the next council and the next generation don't face it even worse than we have. This is budget repair. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I think that we're reaching the end of this debate. I think Councillor Kouros has one question, then I'm going to ask Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up and we'll take it in parts. Oh, Councillor Noon, I'm so sorry. That's you... okay. I, can I just get a question from Councillor Kouros? Yeah. Sorry, uh, Lord Mayor, I just want to just um, have some clarity in regards to the upgrade of Hindley Street. We're allocating $15 mil million dollars to Hindley Street. I'm not, I'm not sure that's actually a matter that's being debated at the moment. No, no, I'm not. I'm not asking about that. I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm asking in regards to uh, renewals. Will we be putting some money towards that upgrade? Through, through, <coughs> through the presiding member, um, there's a, a current uh, 2.5 million dollar commitment for design. Uh, it's proposed that. Um, that will be enhanced by an additional 12 and a half million over two years, uh, but there will be renewal components uh, added to the budget as we work up the final concepts. And do you know, we don't know what that is at the moment. Um, so it could, be, it could be anything up to 25 million for Hindley Street that we're looking at. Um, through the presiding member, we're, we're working on early estimates. Okay. Um, but a renewal allocation in the order of 10 million is not out of the question. Okay, thank you. Look, I'll be very brief. I just want to say that um, I totally support this. I think the, the new councillors have definitely inherited many bad decision, decisions of the past uh, that were before COVID. Uh, for example, even ceasing the outdoor dining fees was a decision in 2018 amongst many other decisions, including uh, maintenance neglect um, is just a travesty. I totally support um, point seven. I think to not to have been applying a more strategic approach on uh, maintaining our parkland buildings is just, is just <laughs> again, a travesty. And I think that this goes towards that, but I would actually like to see an audit done on all of these buildings. I'd like to see a knock health and safety order. I like so it's not just about it, it, it's not just about crumbling buildings. It's about what are the priorities of these particular buildings, so we don't actually cherry pick on um, what needs to be upgraded and what doesn't. So that's one maybe a motion for um, the future. But I absolutely support this and uh, thank Councillor Martin for bringing this to into thank the you, Councillor Newton. Councillor Martin, to sum up? And then yes, we'll just very briefly, Lord Mayor. Can I also uh, give a personal explanation? At, at no stage have I been uh, condemning our administration. I have uh, nothing but the highest regard for the way in which our administration is handling the budget repair exercise that we're now engaged in, and particularly the way in which they have brought our asset management plans up to date. Um, members may not know that the asset management plans until this term of council haven't been updated since 2015. That is, the last term of council did not look at them. And this administration has done that. It's delivering to us new asset management plans, but the obligation is such that we do need to have for a, a period of time a levy that will assist in addressing uh, that, uh, that neglect of years gone by. Um, may I also remind uh, members that we are not approving anything, we are simply noting the information that's been presented to us by the administration. But uh, in doing so, I, I, I've got to tell you, Lord Mayor, there were members talking about feeling good and feeling badly earlier on. I, I'm feeling really good 
that we have finally put on the table, a measure at seven, which I think will help to address that long-term pressing issue in every term of council I've ever served in, that is the state of parklands community buildings. For as long as I can remember, people using those facilities have complained that they're inadequate. This is our opportunity as a council to make an impact and a substantial impact. And if we can uh, persuade the state government to assist us in that endeavour, then we could potentially have at our fingertips three, four million dollars a year. Uh, translated over five years, that's 15 million perhaps, maybe more. Uh, and that will make a huge impact. This council has a great opportunity and I'm pleased to see and hear that people are grasping that and will endorse it. Take it in parts because I, I understand maybe some people would wish to vote against some parts of this. Part one, all those in favour? All those against, that's carried. Part two, all those in favour? All those against, that's carried. Uh, part three, all those in favour? All those against? I'm sorry, I'll say that again. Part three, all those in favour? All those against, that's unanimous. Number four, all those in favour? And those against? That's still carried. Um, number five, all those in favour? All those against? That's carried. Um, six, all those in favour? All those against? That's also carried. Part seven, we might get unanimous. All those in favour? Oh, Councillor Ho. Oh, all right, so we'll take that again. All those in favour? All those against? That's not unanimous, sorry. Uh, number eight, all those in favour? All those against? That's also carried. And Councillor Ho voted against number eight. Sorry? Uh, can we take eight again? All those in favour? All those against? That's unanimous. That's great. deeply entertaining, um, but the item that you may have come to see, we debated earlier, we brought it forward in the agenda, um, so we've already made um, a decision, supported the item on Cranker, but feel free to stay because I know it's highly entertaining. <laughs> My, my report. Um, it's been quite a busy fortnight because of the Easter holidays and I don't know if people were aware but there was a national petonk championship in Adelaide. Um, there was an Australian national band championship and the Australian Sikh Games with the latter two being um, hosted also at the town hall with civic events and I know many of you attended. Um, it was extraordinary the quality of the um, uh, band event and I was quite surprised to see the director of the Black Dyke Band here in place and we are after all the city of music and band music is very popular. I should also mention that I attended the Sikh Games in Ellis Park, 100,000 people attended and despite the media attention, um, follow up from the Adelaide Comics Soccer Club was that it was the best organised, cleanest and best tidy up of any event they've ever seen in that parklands. They were highly impressed and they thought the organisation was the best they'd ever experienced. So I commend the Seat Games organisers because um, it was a wonderful event and a very popular one. Um, I didn't go across the zip line this year, but like many of you, I attended uh, events in the Gather Round, which was extremely successful and I think was very good for the city. Um, many of us attended online sessions. I know Councillor Noon joined me in a Future Living Code amendment um, with the Planning Commission, and I also attended a Green Adelaide talk about the heat mapping project, which is going to be released in the next few days, and I commend it to you because it's, it really reflects the work we're doing in canopy cover and heat mapping. 
One item that's of uh, great joy is some of you may have known um, Lady Mary Steina Watson, uh, who was married to Dr. John Watson, or Dr. Arthur John Watson, um, who was the Lord Mayor between 81 and 83. She was an extremely popular Lady Mayoress, and she has just celebrated her 100th birthday. And I'm hoping that she might come and visit us again at the Town Hall, because she um, worked very hard on behalf of the city. Um, finally, I'd like to acknowledge that the mus uh, Muslim community is celebrating the end of Ramadan, and tomorrow is a celebration of Eid al-Fitr, and um, there will be the breaking of the fast, and I commend it to you if any of you have an opportunity to break fast with uh, members of that faith. So thank you. Would someone move uh, acceptance? Of my thank you. Moved by Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Davis. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you, members. Um, now we're moving on now to 17.1, Councillor Siebentritt. I'm sorry, we didn't have, um, I should have mentioned any councillor's reports. No? Um, then Councillor Siebentritt, 17.1, a motion on notice reflecting the LGA. Would you like to speak to it? Moved by Councillor Siebentritt, seconded by Councillor Giles. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll be uh, brief. I will point out that the structure of the motion, I did have a question on this early, earlier is guided to us by the requirements for ALGA meetings, so there is a, a set structure for it. But the, the context here is that, as many in the chamber would be aware, uh, councils right around Australia, in fact, uh, internationally, have been uh, one of the leaders in action on climate change. But about 10 years ago, the business community got stuck in and started to do some heavy lifting. And we've seen them move from what was previously voluntary reporting through international standards, now getting to a point of mandatory reporting um, of standards here in Australia. And Legislation in this regard was just introduced in the federal parliament and is expected to go through later this year, which will require many in the business community to do mandatory reporting. Local government, on the other hand, while there are examples of best practice, there is no set standard on how local government should be looking at climate risk and what types of climate risk they should disclose. So the intention of this motion here is relatively straightforward. There is no cost to this council. What it is asking is that ALGA start to investigate the opportunities for um, uh, minimum standards as it relates to local government uh, climate disclosure reporting, noting that there will inevitably some, be some differences between states. But I'd encourage you to support this. I think it's something that we'll see happening internationally, and this is a good opportunity for our council here to put up a motion which goes before the ALGA meeting, uh, which uh, Councillor Giles will be attending on our behalf. Um, is there any debate on that? If not, I might put it to the vote if there's no dissent. All those in favour? All those against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you, members. So um, we've I dealt with 17.2. Do we have any motions without notice? No. If not, we'll move on to questions on notice. There are four answers on the table that will be published. Any questions without notice? No. Um, in that case, we'll move on to excluding the public for our confidential items of business. So. Um, could I ask if somebody would move an exclusion clause? Moved by Councillor Giles, seconded by Councillor Martin. Um, all those in favour? All those against? Can I thank the members in the gallery, uh, members of the public in the gallery, and um, thank you for attending. <laughs>